So again, working with Arnold as a, as a main renderer, I wanted to, to explore some of the texturing. So we have a texturing system here that we can um, just try out, and we're going to use the different shaders that actually come with Arnold because they are clearly going to be designed to work with that. So rendering is obviously a combination of materials the colors and images we're, we're putting onto our, our models, lighting, and the render algorithm we're working with. So if I right click this object, making sure it's in object mode, I can go down and assign a new material. So when it does assign a new material, I can exclusively select the Arnold ones. Now this will allow me to just start with the AI standard. If I click on that one, find that that will, that will show up now um, slightly when I bring in a light. If I want these to show up without a light if I right click this one and assign a new material instead of saying um, standard shader I can have a wireframe shader. Now the good thing about this is that it illuminates slightly so I can see that on its own, I can see that come up without any other lighting in there. There's a good way to start when you're, when you're working on items and you want to see them or you haven't textured them and you want to render them using Arnold um, it allows you to have a very very simple texture base for that going back to this this standard one here um, how do I get this to show up? well it's very simple, I, I need to put a light in there, I haven't put a light in there yet and I'm just going to click on this directional light for now just to bring that up and I want to rotate this so that it is angular rather than, than flat on. So now if I render that, I am getting this, this shader coming up in the in the viewport there. Which is great. So I'm starting to see this um, very simple lighting. But what I want to do is really explore um, further than that, I want to explore how I can work with um, different textures on this. So Let's just do a little bit of modeling to make this work. I'm going to move this uh, slightly. I'm going to keep it in that cube shape, 0.5 up, so it's actually underneath that. Um, uh, so I'm going to have something underneath. I'm just going to make a surface underneath. So again, I'll make another cube. Um, this one I'll have at minus 0.5 underneath, so it should actually show up. Underneath that, no, it's underneath here. Yep, I'm seeing that the ball is um, something that I can move up and out of the way. So that's going to just expand under there. So I'm going to use scale. I'm going to scale 48 in the x and 48 in the z dimension, and just bring that up within that. Again, I'm going to right click, assign a new material, and I'm going to use a, a kind of checkerboard material. But I'm going to just use a standard. AI standard and click on this diffuse color option here and I'm going to choose the checkers from this render node. Um, so I'm going to make this to be a kind of very traditional looking, uh, very simple but very traditional looking um, tablecloth. And if I render that now it's going to start showing up and showing that I'm getting a whole environment in there as well and I can start see I can detect a little bit of pink coming in here off that red which is great so I'm seeing some some light bouncing around in my scene if I come over to this place 2D texture I can actually affect how much this is going to be as a, as a checker so I can probably put this to be 48 by 48 repeating this UV is what I want if I turn on that texture there, I should be able to see that in my scene. So textures and lighting is very important to have on in your scene. You can see much more, much more with that. I'll just start saving this. Um, start saving this as I go along. Um, <clears throat> so I want, I want to increase this again. So I'm just going to go for 96 by 96. It's going to be a much smaller checker um, <clears throat> that I think. I will I will start working with. Now one thing I really want to get used to is uh, setting up very kind of simple but often used 
um, textures that I've actually got very lazy at creating myself. So because I have lots of presets in the previous version of Maya, I didn't used to try and make um, make much at all with this. So at the moment, um, this is the wireframe on this item, and it's illuminating slightly as well. You can see the light coming off that, so we probably have to deal with the lighting again. But if I right-click this again in object mode and assign a new material, go into this AI standard, what I can look at now is if I want to create an object without any color, so I'm going to try and do a chrome, and I'm going to bring the weight of this color down. So if I bring that color down, you can see it going into black, so it's turning into a black item, because I'm not using this diffuse, which is the main color in there. I also have specular. If I turn up the specular, the weight of the specular, this will make it more reflective as well. So um, we'll save the scene now, just in case it crashes or anything, um, and render that again. You can see I've got a metallic looking ball with these reflections on. So there is a slight roughness on it, so it's diffusing that on the surface, um, but I am working up very quickly just by changing the, the aspects of this that I'm working with into a um, chrome-like um, object. So if I bring that roughness right down, I should be able to, without much ado, add in that and you can see it's reflecting perfectly the scene around it. Now it is dark. I will at this point start bringing in a sky dome um, or perhaps an environment around it. So if I bring up the render settings, I can bring those on and the rend Arnold render settings environment, I can bring in a background. And so if I bring in a, I can bring in a physical sky shader to give it some color. Um, and I'll just try rendering that. You should be able to see it. No, it's not showing up there. It should have a, um, on the top, we're looking upwards from the horizon get this blue look in there but it's not actually showing up and reflecting on this ball it's not working as I really want it I have an HDR um, HDR image I can work with again that I used in the last one so I'm going to delete that and disconnect it this guy uh, and I'm going to create a sky shader for this instead which I'm going to add in the file that I want to use. I'm just going to click on that. Again, I'm using a field. This is like a picnic in a field. It should come up um, once it's loaded it in. And so if I move those slightly, we should see this image come up on there. And when I render this this time, you get a very bright scene. We're seeing that reflection in there as we come through. So again we need to turn off the visible aspects of that and we should be able to just have that reflecting. Oh no, visible in diffuse, it does want to be visible. Um, or is it just reflecting a dark spot? So um, that's something to play with but um, it is giving me that chrome look, giving me the chrome look that I, I wanted on there. Another aspect I want to work with is um, glass. So if I want to make glass, I can do a similar thing. I'm just going to draw a glass, actually. I can uh, I'll just get a front view there. And I'll get zoomed right in on that, so I'll get the right kind of scale. I'm I'm just going to rotate one from a curved surface. I'm just going to do something very simple, very cocktail glass. And probably done that quite badly, but I'll see. And so I'm just going to revolve around that. And I'll zoom in on that one. I find that it's actually not as bad as I thought, um, but it does need to come up slightly. And I would spend time adjusting that stem, that stem's not very good. But if I right click it, assign a new material, again go to an Arnold shader. So this time, keeping the specular down, 
also bring that diffuse down as well. So I'll bring the weight of that aspect down and the weight of uh, refraction. That's what I'm going to use, not reflection. Refraction is what will allow it to uh, change aspects around. So I'm now going to bump up the IOR value. You can look up IOR values on the internet. I'm going to give this about 154. I find that looks right. Might not be the perfect um, accurate number. You can see I am getting that kind of look in there as well. I think I've ruined it with that adding in that sky dome. Something I need to come back to and look at again. But I can see within that I am getting these reflections of the scene in there. So if I just get that at the right angle so I've got some a nicer background in there. But you can see why I'm using the checkerboard now. The checkerboard really reflects fairly well. Um, and so if I get all of those elements together, we may be able to see as they're closer how they uh, how the light reflect refracts through that. So again, I am going to take off this uh, transform. I'm just going to take that out of the scene. So it is blowing out the scene very much. Um, cut it. And so again, I'm just relying on this directional light, single directional light now. I'm having another look at that in a much more subtle way. So you can see how that's, that, that is working. Um, difficult to see exactly what's going on, but that will give me a glass look within that scene if I'm working with that. So, uh, again, this is something we can adjust and, and work with, but it's something that gives us the basics of these shaders. Now, another way of working with this is um, to take a scene that's already been made and if I open a scene, there's probably this is going to be one that I've downloaded from 3DRenderer.com, which is a fruit bowl. I'm going to open that up, and you can see in there we've got a very nice looking um, bit of modeling. If I open up this render view, I'll make that a bit bigger, bring that out there. Um, if I render that in Maya software, it comes out great. If I render that in Arnold Renderer, again, it's going to be very dark. But we can start working with this straight away by selecting all the elements. If I press Escape, that will stop it rendering. If I select all the elements, right-click, assign a new material, and give it the AI wireframe, we're going to start being able to render that um, and start being able to work with that as I go. So. As I get into that, I can select certain items that I want to, to start working with. So these ones here, right click that again, the two bananas, I'm going to just select the Arnold shader, um, AI standard, and very simply now, I'm going to give that a colour. I'm going to click on this colour here, and give it the standard yellow, and let that close down. If I render that, it comes out a bit dark down there. I'm not quite seeing that because there's so much white in there. That should come out. Ah, no, I'm not. I've changed the reflection, refraction color. So watch out for that. I want to refract yellow and go back to the diffuse color here. So I simply get put the yellow and that should come up within the render there. So I'm getting colors very quickly here. Um, I'm just going to go through the items in here. So I've got an orange. I'm selecting that in my outliner and put that aside. I'm going to just assign a new material to that from there. And each one I'm going to make very quickly using the AI standard. Um, I'm choosing the level of colour. 
orange now, um, apple and a pear. We'll do both of those. In fact, pear, apple, uh, I'll give it a look. Sign a new material, I'll shade out, I'm going to make those green. So, with the few colour again, it seems a little bit too much for me. Um, I'll let myself use that, that very luminous green within this. So I should be now getting a few different elements in there that are coming up colour. The light's coming from these meshes, so it's not, not helping me in, in a lot of ways. This is why I mesh. It's not helping me light the scene. But I can see that that's going to come up not well. So again, if I want to go into Arnold lighting, I can say Arnold lights, area light, and then I can start bringing up a uh, lighting system that will work for my scene. I can then uh, really grab hold of that, bring that up and out. So with this light, I can see that it's got this um, focus in on it. It's got a stem pointing out, and that's the direction it's going to, to light. So what we use a lot with the Arnold renderer. We can point that at the, the main part of the scene there and um, just scale it up. It's very large as well. I can give you a lot of uh, light in there. I will have to use the, um, the other aspects, but we can get quite close with this, with this light. Um, it really kind of show up within the scene what, what we need to. Bring it slightly back. Um, again, that should give me a light over the top. Now, I probably do need to change the intensity of it. So, if I uh, select the plate, press F on the keyboard, that focuses in on it. Um, it should start allowing me to get some energy from there. The area light, go back into this, and I will get a bit more intensity. And I can see that coming up here. I don't want to overdo it with lighting, I just want to get it to show it right um, and have a light source for this as well. So, um, I'm going to have more. This background light's going to change in a minute. I'm going to change that clock in the background um, on the plate. So, uh, now I start taking out the large area of lit material, so there's a lit in a, in a very, um, this material here is actually sh emitting light, but as I start changing that, um, I should be able to assign the material, uh, standard, I should be able to change that colour, um, I'm just going to leave that as a white cloth, but we'll see the difference as I start going through this one, this is much less light in there, I need to start working a lot more with the light that I'm, I'm, I'm creating here. So again, this area light, what I'll do, I'll just make sure it's pointing in the right direction. I'll take the renderer out of the way for a minute. I will bookmark my position for that camera. And make sure it is pointing, it is pointing in the right direction. I'll put my camera in another position, which should be um, looking more directly at it, then I can really start changing that intensity. And it's on 10 at the moment, but I actually want to get that a lot higher. I'm looking directly at it, and all the light is coming from this plate now. So if I go back to this intensity for this area shaped light, area light, I can give that a um, 20, and I'm hoping that will improve it a lot. We've got another render. It is bringing that up slightly, um, but again, I need to have a lot more light in there. That could just be my main source there. Um, and let's say it's 360. And it's very unintuitive for me working with the older versions of Maya. That wasn't needed to go up to an intensity of 360 ever. So that's got to that point. Uh, my plate 
then that would be white, and find new material. And I'm keeping that very simple. And finally I've got these objects in the back there. I'm not actually sure what they are. So I'm going to cut those the scene. They've changed the composition slightly though, so I'll see why they have them in. So I will, um, for the sake of not knowing what they were, I will just give them a colour anyway. Kind of a bit like kiwis. If you give them a brown kiwi look, I would. Uh, so, I'm not going to go into detail of giving them very look. So again, I'll just work, work with the normal colours here. Um, I really just want to bring these out. Um, I think that's that scene. And that's starting to work for me now. So that's going to start to look good. I haven't done the cherries. I would probably have to split those up as well. So those cherries, let's have a quick look at that. I would have to go to the mesh menu here in the modelling and separate those. I think there's two separate elements going on there. You know, with that cherry, separate that. So I can colour the fruit separately to the stalks. Now I may need to do that with some of the other items, but I think this would be the most noticeable if I didn't do this. So finally the fuse of that, red, cherry red, like that, and then the stalks. I can also select and those I can change to be brown. So that's all the texturing I'm going to do. Did more than I thought I would, I got carried away with that. And uh, but it is very satisfying bringing colours into your into your work. I'm just going to bring that from an orange into a brown. Now I did bookmark this, so I did say I've bookmark on it. If I right click the bookmark after I pressed it. And take you back to the place where I bookmarked it. So the final thing again, I'm going to render this, and it has brought up a lot of colour. Probably want a little bit more ambient light around the scene. So I'm going to make an Arnold um, Sky Dome light in there again, and just bring that in. And finally, I just want to bring that intensity right down. And this is really just a fill light that gives it a, a lift from what it was previously. Save that image, render that again with the sky dome in there. Um, I should be able to see that lift slightly um, in that. Uh, if I compare that to the previous shot, you see it's kind of got a general lift to those colours. And Moving forward a little bit further, I just want to get rid of that graininess in the image. And as I pointed out on the previous video, I get to render settings with this. Up. All right, go down here. If I go to the render settings with this, I can go to the arm of renderer and I can up the value of these samples. So, put the five. And render. Now I've sped that up because it's uh, a little bit boring to watch on its own. So the uh, final render I've got here is this uh, I think one to one. Um, is a lot smoother than this very grainy one there. So I've added sampling in there. It took a long, much longer time to render, so you can see why it wasn't set there. Kind of got a way of not changing these great colours because they've come up with this wireframe mesh, but um, wireframe look, but it's actually showing them as kind of black grapes um, rather than the red, uh, green grapes I was imagining that I would change them to. So if I put that back to one to one, we'll see it in its true integrity. Um, and that kind of amount of noise is is nice. Um, it kind of just keeps it in there rather than the previous amount of noise was 
just kind of didn't didn't look quite right. I mean, it looked like um, a cheaper camera in the dark, whereas that one is enough grain just to give it a feel um, and a smooth look. So it's kind of nice to have grain. You don't have to eradicate all of that, um, but it is something that you need to um, you need to to work with. So I'm going to save that image. Uh, from the render view there, save image, change the format, I'm going to use a PNG because it's quite universally usable and save it into my images folder there.